Okay, recording started. So welcome and uh, welcome to the uh, September edition of the Community Hours. Um, today we have uh, some uh, good news uh, to share, the news that uh, less or more everyone was uh, waiting for. So let me just uh, show you the, the agenda for uh, today. Uh, today we are going to um, present uh, the changes that uh, um, we had uh, in the uh, new release uh, of Uyoni. And yes, we are finally going to have uh, uh, a, a new release uh, for, for Uyoni. The release uh, is uh, uh, ongoing uh, during uh, the, this presentation. So you will see uh, packages uh, and uh, notifications uh, uh, landing uh, on, uh, on your uh, uh, UNI installations uh, uh, really soon. And uh, after that, uh, we will have uh, uh, Miguel uh, presenting uh, the, uh, the roadmap, uh, the, the plans uh, that uh, um, Suze uh, would like to, to put on the table for uh, uh, the UNI roadmap. But uh, let's get started. So what we have uh, uh, new in uh, this uh, uh, really <laughs> Uh, fresh release uh, that uh, everyone was uh, waiting for. Um, well, the most important uh, and uh, visible uh, uh, news is indeed uh, that we finally have uh, a, a new version that is using uh, um, LIP 15.5 as a base operating system. And uh, please, this is a, a, a big uh, version bump. So uh, follow the instructions uh, in the release notes uh, and uh, in the documentation, uh, because of course uh, there are some uh, special uh, um, procedures that you should follow when uh, it comes to uh, the, the bump uh, of the operating system. Um, this release uh, is also bringing uh, uh, a new salt version. Uh, we are now releasing uh, um, version uh, 3006.0. Uh, this one also uh, is uh, a new special version. It's the first uh, uh, LTS version uh, of uh, SALT with this new way to, to deliver, uh, the, to handle the life cycle of SALT. So please, uh, also in this case, uh, there are uh, some uh, special steps uh, to, to follow. And uh, it's really important uh, to, to read the documentation and the release notes for not uh, uh, making mistakes uh, that could uh, uh, put you in uh, in trouble. And uh, with this uh, uh, version, uh, we are also increasing uh, the uh, minimal requirement uh, for uh, for the memory. So now uh, the uh, minimal uh, memory uh, to be to be used in your setup uh, is 16 um, giga. So it's a, it's a bump. Before was uh, was eight, but uh, I mean it's um, what we need for. Uh, making uh, sure that you will have uh, a smooth uh, experience uh, uh, using uh, your uh, instances. And uh, there are a lot of uh, new um, systems uh, that are now uh, supported. Uh, we have uh, OpenSUSE LIP uh, uh, Micro uh, 5.4 uh, and also the equivalent uh, enterprise, so SUSE Linux Enterprise uh, um, uh, Micro 5.4. Um, for what concern uh, OpenSUSE LIP 15.5 and uh, SUSE Linux uh, Enterprise Server uh, 15.5, uh, they were uh, uh, already available, but uh, um, uh, now they are not uh, in the uh, beta version anymore, so they are fully supported uh, as, uh, uh, as expected. And uh, we have also uh, Ubuntu 18.04, that is uh, end of life. Uh, so in this case, uh, uh, as always, uh, um, we are not going to deliver uh, any new update for, uh, for those client tools. So um, all the users are really invited to finally upgrade uh, to a newer version like uh, the uh, Ubuntu 20.04 or uh, 22.04. And uh, well, we are not going uh, to break uh, things on purpose when it comes uh, to uh, Ubuntu 18.04, but we are not going uh, to, to release uh, any, any new update. So uh, if you still have systems running uh, on uh, Ubuntu, they will still continue to work. But uh, as I mentioned, uh, they are not going to uh, receive uh, any, any new update. Um, then uh, we have also some... Uh, um, uh, new changes for what concern uh, the Red Hat update uh, infrastructure. 
and uh, um, in particular on the um, uh, automated uh, uh, credential update. Um, in the past, uh, there were some uh, uh, manual import uh, of uh, uh, certificates uh, to be done on the UNI server, uh, but now with uh, uh, following the same approach that we have uh, for, uh, um, for the SUSE pay as you instances, uh, we will have uh, the uh, pay as you go connection that will uh, uh, communicate with the client uh, for uh, uh, getting uh, the uh, authentication uh, data. So uh, that uh, it's um, uh, another improvement that uh, that you will see in uh, in this uh, release. Uh, in the documentation, you will find uh, um, all the details uh, on uh, about this new feature, but uh, that is uh, the uh, short summary. And uh, we also have uh, the um, Ansible integration that is uh, uh, not a tech preview anymore, and it's uh, officially supported. So there are improvements also in, uh, in this direction. And then we have uh, a lot of uh, uh, new changes uh, uh, on the uh, monitoring side. Um, we have uh, uh, the upgrade of Prometheus to version uh, 2.45.0, uh, the Apache exporter to version uh, uh, 100. Uh, Grafana has been updated uh, um, to version 955. Then we have uh, some uh, security fix uh, for uh, Prometheus uh, Alert Manager and also for the uh, Prometheus uh, Black, Black Box uh, Exporter. Uh, for the um, Prometheus uh, uh, PostgreSQL server, uh, we have the version uh, uh, 010, 0101. And uh, for the node exporter, uh, we have uh, the version 150. Uh, for all those uh, uh, exporters and all those uh, version bump, uh, uh, please uh, uh, have a look uh, at the release notes, uh, have a look uh, uh, at the also at the official documentation because we are not only talking about security fixes, but there are uh, new features. And uh, in some cases, uh, like for example, uh, Grafana uh, and also Prometheus, uh, there are some uh, breaking uh, changes. So it's important before uh, uh, doing uh, the, the update, uh, please have a look uh, uh, at the documentation and check that uh, uh, your setup uh, um, will uh, still work, uh, also considering uh, uh, those uh, breaking changes. Uh, last but not least, let's move to the um, SUSE plant uh, contribution uh, to the UNI roadmap. So, Miguel, stage is yours. Oh, now without mute. Thank you very much, Marina. I was talking of mute. It's my signature move. <laughs> so, no, okay. Um, I'm taking over the, the screen, if I may. Yep. Okay. Hello, everyone. So, I'm assuming you can see my screen. Perfectly. Okay, perfect. Nice. So, um, I mean, there's a, 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 quite a Big and nice team behind uh, Ujuni uh, by SUSE. And of course, the contribution by community, always welcomed and always nice. So, we arrange more or less what we plan to do in SUSE to contribute to Ujuni. Um, and uh, I put all this uh, in these slides. I'm using the, the, the SUSE template. So, apologies for the, for the template. Uh, maybe I should have switched it to Ujuni, but I think it's fair since uh, it's a SUSE team, the one who will be working on, on these contributions. But before we talk about the contributions, some principles that we have uh, arranged in, in the team that we think uh, could uh, be applied to Ujuni uh, or wide um, direction. So first, the, the, the trend, okay? When we checked on the environment trends, the usage of Ujuni, the usage of, of, of SUSE Manager, which is the product that we build uh, with Ujuni. Um, we have seen that uh, first Linux is still growing, keeps growing. Uh, the growth of Linux in the market is around 12%. The growth of uh, last year was 12%. The growth of Linux for SUSE was 14%. So the Linux is still growing, okay? Users, uh, many users are patching every six months, 12 months, and they want to patch more frequently. Um, uh, even if you, uh, companies like to standardize or, or organizations like to standardize, 
Uh, normally they have some disks over there that is not part of the Boston standard because people like uh, to use uh, different things and try different things. So some people are using open source, some others are using Alma, some others are using Ubuntu. And, uh, and uh, well, there's more than one distro there. So we need to take that into account. Um, uh, users are using several tools. So it's good uh, if we make Ujuni behave better with other tools. And, uh, and security teams are using their own tools. So it's good to have security features, but we have to think that the one who's going to use them is the sysadmin and not the security person. And then we have a lot of current users that are using SUSE Manager or Uni. So the install base is not as small. Uh, many deployments need continuity. Uh, users are happy with the features, but would like to have more polish on them and the, the there's a space for growth in the in the current customer base of SUSE Manager and, and user base of, of Uduni. So uh, let's let's help people use more Uduni out there and 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 of course let's make make them happy so they can tell their friends and other people can keep using Uduni. So on the cloud, that's another trend. The cloud is growing. So if the growth of uh, of Linux is huge, the the well, huge, it's nice, you know, like 12% is nice. The, the growth on cloud is, is even greater, you know. We are talking about, depending on the on the type of Linux and the type of cloud, we're talking about more than 25, 28%. In many cases are 33 to 36. And there are some uh, corner cases that uh, go even to 45, 50% growth, which is huge, okay. Then customers working on cloud, they, they like to, they don't like to set up their own thing. They like to go to a website and consume a service. So software as a service, if we could make Uduni more suitable for software as a service, even if, if we don't run it, thinking about some users out there that would like to set up their own service, it would be good. So, and also going in that direction will help us make it more usable. Okay, thinking the way, how would I prepare that for software as a service, help us be more, more useful. And of course, Uduni as a platform, for one more thing for software as a service and for Uduni as a platform um, for containerization, which is not here, but it's also another trend. Um, there's one thing in common, you know, normally users do not SSH into software as a service. You know, you have to use the API or the UI or a client tool. Okay, so think about it as no SSH, <laughs> okay. So we are still far from that. And of course there will be SSH in the upcoming versions, uh, at least from what we do. But uh, we have to think that uh, many users are not going to SSH. This is also a trend that we see in Kubernetes. You know, you do not SSH into Kubernetes nodes. You use the Kubernetes API to do things, you know, except for some specific, very weird tasks, admin, admin tasks, normally you do not SSH into Kubernetes nodes. So this is a trend that we have seen. Comments so far, come on, shoot. No, okay, moving forward. I, I do have one comment. So the uh, cloud growth, some of that would have to be net from migration from on-premises into cloud of existing Linux workloads, right? Indeed, but there's a lot of new workloads being uh, run on cloud. Uh, many customers are not so much into migrating, but in putting new workloads on cloud because it's a lot easier. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's a lot easier moving your own workloads from on-premise to cloud is a lot more difficult than what it looks. And there's many companies who are trying to help customers there and users there. And even cloud providers are investing a lot in helping uh, uh, users and customers move their things to cloud. But still, I mean, if you have something running outside of cloud and it's running well, uh, maybe you can consider, okay, do I really need to move everything or not? And what we have seen is that many of the workloads in cloud are net new workloads. And, uh, and many customers that have something on-prem and they have managed to produce their, 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 data, their um, infrastructure to a reasonable amount. They are keeping it. Uh, the costs of on-prem when managed well can be lower than cloud. I mean, 
you know, think about it like if you build it yourself, the profit is for you. So <laughs> many customers uh, that we have visited in SUSE uh, are doing that. So that cloud growth is most uh, of it uh, net new workloads. So going forward, um, engineering principles, the principle of seeing defaults. I mean, we have we want to provide uh, a default for everything, so things run when you just deploy it. It's running, okay, and then you can change it, of course. But we have to provide a default for almost everything and an example if possible. Okay, thinking about uh, places where you would like to have an example, like an AutoJust profile. I have seen the repository from Don with the AutoJust profiles is <laughs> really valuable there, and I've seen other repositories from other people who are contributing to to Uni here that uh, have a lot of information there. So if you have a, a configuration file that you're using and it's useful, please share it because uh, uh, it would be interesting to consider them to be added to the default Ujuni install, okay? Then the principle of API first, we are not following this principle right now. There's two APIs, one, the one that is used by the UI and another one, the one that is attacked directly when you want to do something with the API. And uh, uh, it would be good if we could focus on, on bringing this second API, you know, the one that is uh, uh, publicly uh, available for users to do things like X, uh, using XML RPC or using the JSON over HTTP, or as, uh, as I like to call it, the A REST API, the almost REST API. So this, this, this function, uh, all the functions that we do should be implemented through API. Also for containers, okay? As we're putting Uduni in containers, we need this to be uh, more API friendly. The principle of least annoyance, which uh, I, I happened to see before, especially in the FreeBSD community, uh, which is if you're going to change something, don't annoy the user, okay? <laughs> Make it in a way that it becomes easier for them to understand the change, okay? And the principle of overlap, if we're going to change any kind of component, First, we have the other one, the, the, the one substituting it in place and running and working well, and then we remove the old one, which is what we have done with the old client that you know that we are not going to support the old RA chain uh, check client or the Jabber and OSAT uh, installs. So these are being cleaned out. So don't expect to have those. Not now that we are fully supported, fully working with the SALT client, we can remove that one. And what are we not doing? We are not going to add system management. So do not expect the SUSE team to add support for Windows systems. Do not expect SUSE team to add uh, hardware management like Redfish or things like that, except if it's through the operating system, then, okay, could be done. Uh, we're not going to add management for network devices and we're not going to do Kubernetes management, although we could manage the operating system uh, that is supporting Kubernetes. And we do it very well, by the way. By the way, there are customers who are using System Manager to manage the operating system uh, that is uh, powering Kubernetes, and they are very happy with it. Okay, let's put the focus on the operating system layer. Let's put the focus on Linux, and let's think that our users are Linux administrators, uh, site uh, reliability engineers, and platform engineers. Okay. The proposals uh, align with the drivers. So the Linux strategy. Um, on top of containerization that is already happening, you know, we want to align with the adaptable Linux platform that is coming from, from SUSE. So whenever we have some releases of adaptable Linux platform, we would like to support them. We want to add support for confidential compute. This means doing confidential compute at the station in cloud and add support for any version that comes out on SLS 15 or, or Lib 15, okay? And of course, supporting the real derivatives like uh, Rocky Linux, and, uh, or, and Oracle Linux and RHEL itself and, uh, and almost anything that comes from the Open ELA project. If you don't know about Open ELA project, it's a project that has been uh, built by different uh, organizations and companies to be able to have a common source repository to build distributions that are behind the price Linux compatible. Okay, so I really suggest you to go and check on Open ELA. Um, keep happy the current users. Okay, keep all the features that are right there are accessible through the API, improve the capabilities, make it easier to use, uh, polish things that are there. Like uh, I always complain about one thing, which is 
when you register a system that has an ID, uh, we should have at least a warning like, hey, this ID is duplicated, you know? So these things, uh, I mean, we have to take more care of them whenever time is available, of course, of course, you know, but uh, yeah, this is, these are things that uh, if we prioritize well and, and there's time for this, we of course should take care of this. And last but not least, cloud containerization. Again, we are containerizing uh, Uyuni. Um, first images will appear soon. Uh, I think next release, right, Marina? I think that it's going to be 2023.10 that we will have. Uh, correct. That is correct. the plan. So but we have also Cedric here. Yeah, okay. I mean, uh, I, I know that Cedric, Don, uh, and, uh, and Ricardo, and I, many other people in the team are working on containerization, but I, I, I ask them a lot, hey, how is it going? I want to try it, you know? I even, for the record, I did a demo of Fujuni running on top of OpenSUSE Lib 15.5 in our open source uh, summit in Bilbao, okay? So I got a, a, a build, a nightly build that we have around there and I managed to show it uh, running. So we are right now in a, in a pre-beta phase that is the, the kind of demo in front of an audience. So yeah, just for the record. Uh, what else? Uh, everything through APIs, that could take us to role-based access control, that could take us to software as a service. Okay, to be able to have multi-tenancy, you have a very strong role-based access control that, that requires that everything goes through the same API, or at least this is how we plan. Okay, and also Uyuni as a platform. So if we uh, put the features in the API first uh, it, and the API becomes the main point of access, then it will be a lot easier to integrate uh, Uyuni or Susu Manager into any third party tool that you want to use or manage or, or bring to the table. Okay, questions so far? I'm going to keep going very quickly on the timeline. If not, I'm going to take the full hour and it wouldn't be fair. So again, aligned with the SLE OpenSUSE team, I mean, we are the, 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 the SUSE people working on the journey. So we are going to align with OpenSUSE Leaf and, and SUSE Linux Enterprise and all the products that, uh, that SUSE is building without leaving all the other Linux behind, of course. Uh, we want to cover what our colleagues in, in the Linux team are providing. And of course, in the OpenSUSE community, which is uh, really cool. And uh, we want to have this uh, as a initial priority. Okay. What else? Um, Uyuni as a platform, containerization already working. Um, really, I, I, I love working with this engineering team. I love what is being done on containerization and in many other places, but this one I tried it myself and I, I loved it. And the, the other ones that I tried also loved them, but uh, this is the one I'm mentioning now because I've been playing with it. So, Having a CLI tool for both administration and user uh, management, same way as Kubernetes has Kube ADM to manage and deploy Kubernetes clusters and kubectl to, to access the API to, for example, check which containers are running. We, we are going to do that and have Uduni ADM to deploy, upgrade, migrate uh, Uduni clusters and Uduni CTL to connect to the API and get information, for example, on the on the systems that are connected, not there yet. I was working on that feature uh, one of those Tuesdays, and I didn't manage to complete it. So, <laughs> but right now, UniCTL can. If you are in the same system and you go UniCTL exec, it can execute any of the tools or commands that you're used to. So, principle of least annoyance: you can connect to a system that is running the container and using the UniCTL run the typical space CMD command, for example. Okay. And what else? Uh, backup mechanism. I mean, if we are migrating, just putting things in a tar file so we can uh, have it as an intermediate step. Sounds easier than it's done. Okay, it's not that easy. It's a lot more difficult, but still. And then register machines without having the channel downloaded would be good because many users just go download it and the first thing they try is to register a machine and then, oh, I need the channels, you know? So providing a way for these machines to be registered would be nice. More things, making it easy to use. I'm not going to go through this, but you see that adding a samples for things uh, and providing some defaults, following the principle of same defaults is, is there everywhere. So um, let's see if we can get those auto-just samples and put it in Uduni by default. So whenever someone wants to deploy 
automatically OpenSUSE lib, they can do it. And if they want to do it with SUSE Linux Enterprise, they can do it too. Producing the barrier to adopt features is important for us. Security and compliance, good things on getting more uh, information from Oval directly instead of from the packages to be able to uh, assess better the CVEs and more things on OpenSCAP, which is a very important part of, of Ujuni that is being used for the system administrators to check whenever they want if they are in compliance before the security team comes uh, chasing them. Hey, you have to chase this or that now. I mean, better to be able to check it yourself. Better OS support. Oh, Miguel. So, yes, go. Just I want to interrupt you here because the Oval support is uh, quite uh, well progressed. Thank to thank to Husam from the community community who oh. is in the call here. So cool. many thanks Husam for for the contribution. Oh yes, yes, Husam, thank you very much. If we meet in any event, remind me I owe you at least a, a beer or a drink, <laughs> a favorite drink. Okay. So yeah, thank you, Cedric. Uh, these kudos are really nice. So keep them, keep bringing them, and interrupt me as many times as you need. So Kusan, thank you very much. Uh, and, and again, I owe you a drink. Okay. What else? Um, um, audit and actions in the Junior clients. Open SCAP, I already mentioned this. Better OS support. Oh, the folks at IRM have provided us of a, with a, a server, a very nice server with IRM processor. So we are going to use that for testing, and we are going to to make uh, Ujuni run on ARM and SUSE Manager whenever we we release it to run on ARM. So if you have your Raspberry Pi with 16 gigabytes, uh, we we will have to wait for Raspberry Pi 5 to have 16 gigabytes, which I heard that it might be coming. So it will be great to 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 be able to run it there, so, uh, or or if not, I mean. You know that this runs on eight gigabytes, so the latest Raspberry Pi could run it, but it's not what we say we support because we changed it to 16 gigabytes. You Music will code. run out of memory with eight gig. Oh, 10, no, come on. 10 gig, you can do it. Ah, but, okay. Uh, we officially say 16 to be safe. Okay, so I'm sorry, we'll have to wait for Raspberry Pi uh, 5 with 16 gigabytes or for the Raspberry Pi 6. And it's going to come very soon. We will see. What else? Uh, RHEL and RHEL devices upstream support and um, and support for Amazon Linux, any Linux anywhere, any scale. That is the, the motto. So extending the support for Linuxes. Um, of course, the reboot flag. I was checking on a bug the other day on the reboot flag. And I was checking on the Python script to be able to check if a rel system or rel equivalent system like Rocky or Alma uh, required reboot. It's a tool that is not installed by default, by the way. And the Python script doesn't run nicely if you try to use it standalone. So <laughs> we'll have to invest a bit of time there. But uh, it's one of those things that uh, I like to check from time to time. Um, and what else? Uh, registration from FIDO, um, I mean, the, our Edge team. Is, is, is going to use uh, Uduni and SUSE Manager in their toolkit. And uh, they say, hey, can you do FIDO registration, which is a system wakes up, says hello, send some certificates, and then you register it, and then you send the activation key, install the, the, the client, and then attach the channel. So yeah, I mean, uh, this is one of the things that has been requested. But as you see, it's red, so it's going to be uh, long term. Okay. What else? Uh, more content available to use. As I already mentioned, uh, you see, for example, providing GitHub repos for content that uh, you can use. I know there are samples hidden in the Ujuni repository for API usage written in Python. So maybe we will create a, a new repository just for examples on API usage, or I don't know. I mean, it will be. Uh, I, I led that uh, to the, engineering, the engineers that are uh, working on the code to organize it the best way they think is, is possible, but making it more visible for people to use it, I think it would be a good thing to do. What else? Um, ah, 
up, updating and configuration management, there was a request coming on being able to do service pack migrations, which means if you are on OpenSUSE Leap uh, 15.4 and you want to move to 15.5, uh, to be able to do it with uh, SSM or groups, you know, so you select systems and you say, now apply it to this. And this is one of the things we, we want to add also on fast track channels and more automation, 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 recurring action change, recurring app scans, recurring uh, content lifecycle management uh, executions and recurring Ansible playbooks uh, execution, okay? And of course, improved management at scale. Uh, the hub uh, requires a REST-like API that doesn't have yet. It's only XML RPC only, and, uh, and also uh, provide better reporting capabilities so you can see the whole list of systems and be able to see, I mean, what you have in all the servers that you have installed, the unit servers that you have installed that you're managing from the hub server. This is the summary in case you want to take a look at it. And uh, I've already taken a lot of time. So just thank you very much for listening. And uh, I hope we have very nice releases of Ujuni and there's a lot of people trying it. And especially in the containerized form that it will come in October expected. Okay, so that would be it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marina, for having me here and, and for the rest of the team for listening and everyone in the community for listening and, and contributing and participating. Thank you. Back to you, Marina. Thanks a lot, Miguel. Uh, well, for uh, today uh, is uh, mainly all. Uh, so if you have any question or clarification on the uh, ongoing release or uh, whatever you would like to, to ask, feel free. Um, I don't know if uh, Cedric, you want to mention something uh, on the... Uh... Yes. Yeah, okay, feel free to go. Yes. Uh, so first, first things first, I will write a mail, but I just changed the default debugging port for Tomcat. So be aware, a port 8000 um, is not used anymore. You'll need to use 8003. And um, also um, I'm going to merge all the container work in master as soon as possible. Probably not today because it's Friday. There are still some things to do, but hopefully next week. So we can already start playing around with it. I pasted the link in the chat uh, to Uyuni Tools, which is containing Uyuni ADM and Uyuni CTL. And um, well, we'll update that um, and send a mail on the mailing list on, on the, the, how to do it once it's merged in master. Brace for impact is coming. But by the way, I, I tried to hack a bit on Uduni ACTL and Uduni ADM, and they're a very nice way to, to get it started. Uh, especially if you want to get it started with Go and learn Go, uh, they are very, very nice tools to, to go on and hack on. So if you want to have fun, go there and take a look. Now back and, to you, Marina. I will not update up to you again. Sorry. <laughs> and Andre, Andre is currently adding some some um, wrapper co code in UniCTL to be able to call the API, the Susan Manager API, Uyuni API. So that will be even easier for you to add any API, any command that wraps around the API there. Yeah, because. Uh... <clears throat> Do if you use a lot of space CMD, uh, you will find that you need to follow the docs on creating a default access file for space CMD because uh, if you just call it straight from the command line, it doesn't even know what server to connect to. So, you just have to. There's a few things that we'll have to do that are. Um, Make, well, make life a little challenging from the CLI access part. I can embed that into the setup. Yep. This is what comes from, you know, those kind of, of uh, tunings are really helped by people testing it out. So please uh, feel free to test and give us feedback. And just like issues like this one feel uh, just file them uh because if you tell them uh just like don't mention here but uh probably on monday we'll have forgotten 
Yeah, and talking about feedback, uh, uh, actually, it would be also really nice to see uh, how you are using uh, Huyoni and uh, uh, if you have uh, also some uh, something special uh, you are uh, working on uh, uh, that you would like to present to the uh, upcoming uh, uh, community awards, uh, uh, of course, feel free to um, uh, to directly reach out uh, on Gitter or on uh, on the discussions uh, uh, on uh, on GitHub. But please uh, feel free to to share uh, what uh, what you are doing uh, with uh, with Uyoni. We definitely uh, want to see uh, more from uh, from the community, and uh, it's important to to get uh, your feedback also for uh, for us uh, for understanding if uh, what we are uh, uh, planning in uh, uh, is also what. Uh, um, you you need to have uh, in uh, in Uyoni. So any any question? Anything else uh, that uh, you would like to share, folks? Uh, maybe uh, Ricardo, do you want to directly uh, comment on uh, on the microphone, uh, given that there is a uh, in the chat uh, the discussion uh, about uh, yeah. the Unicity. Yeah. Yeah. So the um, uh, uh, this first uh, approach, the idea is to be able to call in the, the space CMD directly from Unicity. Um, okay, it's at one more keyword at the beginning of the command, and maybe a few adjustments. But uh, the idea is to, to make it as simple as, as it is right now to keep using the same command. This is as a first step. Um, <clears throat> but as you all know, we have a lot of different command line tools on, on SUS Manager and um, several different tools that do, do different stuff on this one. Uh, and our goal is to start merging all these tools on Uni uh, CTL and start deprecating these tools to have one common place to interact with the, the server. So in Uni CTL or Uni ADM, depending on the tool and depending on what, what, what the tool is doing. It will land on one uh, one of the, these two, and this is should be in the in, as a long term um, wow. the only two tools that we should use. But as you can understand, the uh, space CMD it's a huge tool from from uh, the new space, and will not be in in a couple of days that we'll be able to do that. Um, and for that reason, in this first step, you should use uh, yeah exactly as Miguel put this is UniCTL exec space CMD. Package removal, for example. <clears throat> um, but this will be documented and will be part of the, the French network that uh, we will share in the future. But the UniCTL is something that is still under development. Uh, the UniADM, um, we have a rolling release, and Cedric will prepare the email for this and share this information. And uh, we will we'll appreciate Survive. any feedback that you can get from, from you guys from testing. But um, be aware that this is still a rolling release. So uh, as all the rolling releases, you can break at any time, and we apologize <laughs> beforehand for that. If you break anything on this rolling release, uh, we tried not to. Um, but any feedback as soon as possible, it's really helpful for us and really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ricardo, do you want to add anything? Maybe I should unmute myself. Huh? I was uh, talking on mute. Great. Uh, well, I was uh, going to say that, uh, as I mentioned uh, at the beginning, uh, the Uyuni release uh, is um, in progress. Uh, as usual, uh, uh, we will send out an uh, announcement uh, and uh, uh, you will uh, receive all the information also on, uh, on Gitter. Uh, so stay tuned. Uh, finally, <laughs> the release uh, is uh, out. And uh, Lupus in Fabula, we have uh, Raul, perfect timing. <laughs> OK, Hello. so let, uh, let me introduce you. <laughs> Uh, Raul is uh, uh, the, um, the other uh, release engineer that uh, uh, he's helping uh, with, uh, with the uni and the Susan manager. So perfect timing. We were exactly talking about uh, the uni release. So do you want to tell us something? Uh, yes. So uh, hello, everyone. Some of you might already know me, but for the ones that you don't, as Marina said, I am the new release engineer for, for uni. And I am happy to announce that uh, we just released uh, Uyuni some minutes ago. Uh, the announcement uh, should be in the inbox and in Twitter. And, and yes, that's mostly it. Uh, Marina, did you already 
as I missed all the rest of the presentation, did you already talk about it? Uh, yeah, I was mentioning uh, uh, quickly the, the new changes uh, and uh, the, the new features uh, available. And uh, I want to add uh, uh, that uh, really this release uh, took uh, <laughs> too long, but uh, yeah, finally is, uh, is out and I want to thank uh, everyone uh, uh, involved uh, uh, from uh, the community giving feedback uh, uh, to all the other uh, members of the team uh, that uh, helped uh, in uh, making this uh, release possible. Thanks, uh, really, thanks a lot, everyone. Yes, and uh, about the release engineer, uh, I uh, would like to uh, expand a little bit about myself, I will be short. Uh, so I have been working for SUSE for 10 years as a support engineer, and I started as a, a release engineer uh, very recently. So uh, hopefully you will see me uh, here in the community hours from now on. So glad to be uh, with you. Uh, maybe somebody knows me from support already. So looking forward to, to hearing from the community. Yeah, thanks again. I'm really happy to have you in the team. It's great. Okay, then. Um... Do you have uh, any other question or, or something else that uh, you would like to know, folks, uh, here in the call? Yes. Hi, everybody. I'd like to know whether there are any news on uh, upcoming or more Ansible support for SUSE Manager and Uyuni. I know we have this technical preview that's now supported. Are there any plans to add additional features for that? Uh, well, there was a, uh, I don't know if uh, it was from you actually, but there was a, 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 an issue asking about uh, uh, the current version of Ansible that uh, we are supporting. Yes, and, uh, that was yeah. my, my take. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so yeah, th that one is uh, something that we are uh, uh, looking uh, into. And uh, if you have uh, uh, any um, details that you would like to share also directly in the, car in the card or, or, or now, uh, on uh, what is missing uh, and uh, uh, yeah, in general, which are the features that uh, are currently missing and which is the version that from your point of view we should look uh, into, I think could be really helpful uh, for uh, uh, driving uh, the discussion a bit uh, better. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, I already created some issues. I will simply link them. And um, I would have something to share maybe on one of the next community hours if you uh, people would be interested. Um, I already posted it yesterday on the Jitter um, chat. So we had an Ansible hackathon the last couple of days in the company I, I work for and we did some things regarding Uyuni, but um, I can also drop a mail. So maybe that would be of interest for some people I thought. As I mentioned before, absolutely yes. But uh, yes. Ricardo? Yeah, I'm not sure if Miguel is in is in here, but uh, regarding Uni um, Ansible support, see. Uh, we should be able to have some more um, information on that in in the in the next few months, um, hopefully weeks. But I'm not sure. But I'm I'm not sure if Miguel is back or not. Months, months, months. Okay, I'm I'm working on that. But I, yeah. Months. Okay. Yes. Yes. Still, see, yeah. Will uh, we get news or not? Okay. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. But don't well, worry, also, Miguel, don't feel the pressure. No, no. <laughs> no, no. But, no yes, um, I, look, pressure makes diamonds, don't worry. Yeah. But <laughs> um, Christian, we are, this is something that we are actively looking. Um, so what kind of news we will <laughs> have on, on this regard, that, that will depend on a lot of factors. Uh, but th that is something is under our header. And you can see uh, from Miguel, it's under Miguel Reader. <laughs> Really See. close to him, so it's <laughs> uh, like uh, right here, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, like really, yeah. we, but this is something we know that we know that many people are using. Ricardo, do, do you mind if I mute you? <laughs> okay, no, <laughs> so yeah, it happens to us all, you know. We work from home, there's some noise at home, it's normal. So uh, now, um, 
we know that many customers are using and many users. I say customers because normally I'm meeting more customers than, than users. And, but again, users are also important. Uni is very important to us. Uh, one of the things I discussed in the in the open source summit is um, how to to how a project could become part of the new foundation. So I'm studying it, but right now there's it's not how nothing is happening. Okay, we need to study it and see because it has a cost and it's going is very difficult. So, um, but uh, just letting you know, look, we want to be a community, open community. We want to be as open and vendor independent as possible, even when most of the people working here are from SUSE, but in SUSE we are very committed to open source. And therefore this is one of the things we are trying to do to, to improve. So this is one of the things I'm working on. The other one is uh, of course, considering uh, all the users that are using Ansible as the automation and, uh, and uh, Uduni SUSE manager for patch management, uh, inventory management, uh, security management, and all the other things that you can do with them. And the example that you're doing in, in, in your company, Christian, is a really good one and, uh, and uh, I kept it like hey how can we make this uh, a lot easier not just for you but for the whole community and all the users that want to use the bo both of both tools and use the best of both worlds so working on it not there yet thanks but uh... You were, you were already saying that you would like to present something, so I will reach out <laughs> and I will ask you details for, uh, for the presentation for the next uh, community hour. Of course, if you, if you want to present uh, during uh, the, the next one. Yes, of course. So um, I'd, I'd like to get your thoughts and maybe it might be useful for others. So I'd, I'd love to share something if it matches the timetable. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yes. Thanks a lot, it would be really nice. Okay, uh, any other comment or feedback? If not, uh, then I think, I think we can uh, uh, close a bit early and uh, yeah, I wish you uh, a great uh, Friday, a wonderful weekend and uh, go, go, go and install uh, the new universe. <laughs> Enjoy it. For, for the friends in Germany, happy reunification day next Tuesday. Okay, enjoy. Probably most of them are going to take a long weekend. So enjoy. You're right. Thanks a lot. Bye. 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 Bye.